sing and praise and encourage one another. Right. It's great to be able to come together for fellowship, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Something about Tuesday night is wonderful, but it's even better when you can press, uh, uh, put your hand on somebody else's hand. All right. All right. It's even better when you can press the flesh, as they say. Yeah. Be able to shake hands, greet, yeah. smile, do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, on Tuesday night, I, I don't know if you're baking eggs, <laughs> frying eggs, yeah. or baking a cake. I, I don't know. Right. Camera's off. Yeah. But on uh, on Sunday, when we're together, we get to see one another. All right, all right. We get to encourage one another. Yes. Want to again say how good it is to be here today. I want to invite you to James chapter number four. That's our takeoff point for today. James chapter number four. I'm going to focus my attention on the first ten verses. I want to highlight some things that are said in those verses of scripture. And I hope and trust that you'll follow along as we examine the Word of God together. Let me tell you that uh, this is a letter that is full of frank exhortation. When I say frank exhortation, I'm saying that James wrote this letter without trying to nice it up. Uh, he wasn't trying to sugarcoat anything. He wasn't trying to placate the people. When James wrote this letter, he wrote it straight and to the point. He didn't pull any punches. He wanted to make sure that the message of God got into the ears and hopefully into the hearts of those that were hearing it. So this exhortation that is in James is exhortation to have us perform activity in day-to-day -day life. And therefore, it's good to read this letter on a regular basis as a reminder. As a reminder that living for God is not about what we do on Sunday only. Right. It's about what we do Monday through Monday. Right. It's about you and me coming together and, and understanding who we are. Right. We are the kingdom of God's dear Son. Yes. We are children of God. Uh, we are people that are in this world, but not to behave as this world. Yes, we're individuals that have been called to a higher level. Not because we think we're better than anybody else, mm -hmm. but because the God we serve uh -huh. is God. Right. And right. his people have got to be different right. than right. the people that don't belong to him. Right. Now, I find it even more interesting that this council is given to a group of Hello, believers. Uh -huh. If you listen carefully as Brother Terry was reading the text, there were some things said in there that might make you wonder. Right. Might scratch your head when he talks about cleanse your hands, you sinners. Yeah. Right. He, he talks about things like that. He said, well, how in the world could a man of God say that to people of God? All right. Well, it's quite simple. When people of God know that, yeah. like people of God, right. then you got to call it for what it is. Yes, and so that's what James does. You would think that some of the things stated in this section of the letter aren't befitting for children of God. And yet, what's really the case is that the behavior of those people uh, was not befitting of God. Right. And I find that we don't want to just pin that on folks in the first century. Because sometimes you and I get out of the way. Right. And, and don't tend to follow the path that we are to follow. And so this lesson is really asking us the question. And that question is, how do we, how do we form or become formed in the image of God? Uh -huh. It is true that we must continually strive to be that. And, and, and I want to encourage us to continue to strive to be that. And when we talk about this, and we think about what's written in this part of the letter, it's interesting that although we are called to love one another, uh, some of us have a struggle liking one another. And I know we got no choice about loving one another. Jesus said, uh, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples and that you have love for one another. That's a copy. Yeah. But I'm trying to work a little bit more toward what we can learn to like, yeah. as well as to look. Well, well. And, and someone asked the question, why do we have struggles uh, 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 liking one another? And that's where 
where this message is coming from. So for the next few minutes, let me talk to you from the subject, why can't we be friends? Yeah. Why can't we be friends? Now some of you, gonna, you're not going to get that song out of your mind for the rest of the day. But why can we, can't we be friends? That's a good question. It's a question for God's people everywhere. Why can't we be friends? Now notice, James has already pointed out in this letter the poisonous, destructive nature of the unbridled tongue. He's already talked about that in chapter number 3. If you recall, I spoke to you not too long ago uh, from the subject, watch your mouth and, and how to avoid bad breath. And I'm not talking about the stuff that Listerine and Scope takes care of. Right. Only the uh, antiseptic of God's word yes. can take care of that. Right. Uh, and so James has already covered that area. And then he pointed to the difference between wise and foolish living. He basically said, don't claim to be wise when your behavior doesn't match your claim. Yeah. Don't claim to be wise when you can't control your tongue. Yeah. Don't claim to be wise when you are exercising bad breath. So he talks about that. And then he talked about the idea of how in our fellowship we've got to learn to get along better. And in this section of the letter, he talks exactly about that. Now notice verse number 1 of chapter 4. James says, from which comes wars and fightings among you. Come they not from hence, even of your lust that war in your members? Yeah. That's a good question to ask every congregation of God's people. Yeah. From which comes wars and fightings among you? Mm -hmm. He's not talking about the business meeting no. every now and again. He's not talking about things of that nature. He's talking about day-to-day -day fellowship. Where do the wars come from? Where do the fightings come from? And I'm glad that he gives us an answer. He said these things, they don't come from the outside. He talks about the fact that these things come from inside. He talks about the fact that these things come because you and I have to recognize that in the church we can easily become combustible. Yeah. Now some of you know something about uh, vehicles. Some of you know something about vehicles and you know about uh, those gas powered, gas powered vehicles. Yeah. Uh, they, they run by what's some known as internal combustion. Now, internal, internal combustion focuses on the idea that in your car, in that engine, yeah. there is a chamber. Right. And in that chamber, there is a piston. Yeah, and the piston is connected to a piston rod. Right. And the piston rod is connected to a cam. Yeah. And that cam has a drive train. Yeah. And it also has two openings up in the top, generally speaking. Yeah. And those are valves. Yeah. And the gas comes in through that area. Comes into that area, yeah. and the air is compressed in that chamber. Oh and so the piston's trying to come up, yeah. and there's a spark plug. Yeah. And when that piston gets up and so far, combined with the compressed air and the gasoline, pop! Yeah. And that piston gets knocked back down. Yeah. And when the piston gets knocked back down, the uh, piston rod goes down. Uh -huh. And the piston rod connected to the chamber. Yeah. The, the cam connected to the job train, and that's how your wheels yeah. uh, get to move. Yeah. And now you don't have to pay for that, I'm telling you that. Yeah. I'll give you that for free. But that's what gets your car moving. All right. But I want to let you know, although that is internal combustion, that's, that's a good thing. Because when you have internal combustion, you can move forward. Well, now, what does that have to do about the church? The church is something like that. Yeah. You've got different parts in the church. Right. Some folk are pistons. Yeah. Some folk are, are, are piston rods. Right. Some folk are cams. Some are on the drive train. Yeah. Some folk are spark plugs. Some folk are valves. I'm telling you, it's great to have all of that. And some folks work in these different capacities, and that's fine. But the problem is sometimes we have bad gas. <laughs> we bring bad gas. And as a result of that, the car can't get the fire that it needs. And therefore, we end up throwing a piston rod. We end up tearing up the chamber. 
your wars come from? He says, don't they come from your members? Yeah. Right. Don't they come from your members? Yeah. They come from your, your, your passions. Yeah. They come from my passions. He says very clearly in verse number one, uh, do they not come from your desires? Right. Your desires that war in your members. Yeah. Each one of us needs to pay attention to this because James is saying that the problem that we have with others is tied to the problem that we have with ourselves. All right. Every one of us has to deal with us yeah. in dealing with the problems that we have, the pleasures or passions that are on with war or at war within us. Now, if your Bible says passion or pleasure, I want to let you know the same kind of idea. Yeah. What James is getting at is that you and I have to battle with the passions and the pleasures that we have within ourselves. Yeah. He is talking about those strong desires that we have within ourselves. It is these unbridled and warring or warring things that are happening in here that are causing us to malfunction All right. All right. with people on the outside of us. Yeah. Our passions, our desires, corrupted by our flesh, move us in the conflict with other people. All right. When we get at this verse in a different way, it's saying the problem we have getting along and liking one another is because too often we want our own way. Yeah. Right. And when everybody wants his or her own way, right, you're not going to get very far. Right. You're not going to get very far. Right. There's a problem when I demand my way, yeah. and you demand your way, yeah. and neither one of us are willing to give, yeah. we won't be able to get along. Right. Can two walk together? Except they be agreed. Right. Right. Now let's talk about this a little bit more carefully. You see, the bottom line is that we are still dealing with some internal problems such as our flesh. Right. Every one of us has sinful human nature. Yeah. Every one of us is still wrestling with this idea of wanting to do what we want to do. Right. Every one of us has struggles based on our own agenda. Listen to John in 1 John chapter 2 verses 15 through 17. Love not the world. Right. Neither the things that are in the world. He talks about all the things of the world, those things are worth it. And he gives us the lust of the eye. Right. The lust of the flesh. Right. The pride of life. Right. Each one of those things points to you and me as individuals. Right. There are things that I have a strong passion for because I want them for me. Yeah. Right. Right. There are things you have a strong passion for right. Right. because you want them for yourself. Uh, and as a result of that, when yours comes in conflict with mine, right. we got a problem. Yes, yes. And we can't work together. Right. We can't get along. We don't want to be friends. Right. Why? Because I've got the lust of the flesh, and so do you. Yeah. If we focus on the world. Right. I've got the lust of the eye, and so do you. Yeah. If we're focused in the world. Yeah. I've got the pride of life, and so do you. If we are focused in the world system. Right. This world will cause you and me to forget about everybody else except ourselves. Yeah. This world will drive us to say what we want is most important than that what anybody else says. Right. And as a result of that, when we operate in that way, <coughs> we can never get down the street. Right let alone down the path of life. Amen. So James says, what is the cause of all of these problems that you are having? He is simply saying the cause of these problems is the focus on self uh -huh. and self alone. All right. Now the Bible does tell us that we ought to care about self. Right. Mm -hmm. The Bible does let us know that we need to care about self. But somewhere I read, think not every man of his own things, but also on the things of others. There is a need to focus on what somebody else needs. That's the problem with our country today. We have problems in our country today. We have mindsets that are all about my personal agenda. 
He has said over and over in his word how jealous he is. Exodus 34, verse 14. For you shall worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous. Right. is a jealous God. Yes, Deuteronomy 4, 24, For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous yes, God. Right. Joshua chapter 24, But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. The point of the matter is that God is a jealous God and the application in this test is that if you and if I go about living our lives based on focusing on ourselves, living by the devil's standards, God gets jealous. That's it. Okay. As if God says, all this I've done for you. Yes, sir. And you're going to act like that? Right. Let me make it a little bit more real. All of this I'm giving you. And you're going to run around with somebody else? Wow. What man in here, husband or not, right. husband or wanting to be, yeah. would want to give himself to his spouse only to come home mm -hmm. and find her laying up on, with another man? Oh, no. I don't think there's a brother in here no, who I wouldn't have to go down to the yeah. jail yeah. and pull out of there. Because he can't take that stuff. Yeah. I'm a big bad man. Uh huh. Yeah. You be ready to go crazy yeah. in a situation like that. Right. You know you would. Yeah. Well, how do you think God feels yeah. when He has given us a cleansing in the blood of Christ, yeah. washed us clean, and given us a new way to live, All right. and given us His Holy Spirit to direct us in that living? Yeah. But Monday morning, we get up and decide, well, I don't feel like that today. Yeah. I want to say exactly what I want to say. I'm going to think exactly what I want to think. I want to act exactly as I want to act. And that's because this I feel like doing it. That's a, an adulterous relationship against the God of heaven. He's a jealous God. He won't take that. What sister in here, married or hoping to be, would be doing all she can for her husband or hope to be and find out when she comes home. Oh, he in there laying up with shoes. Oh. Rubbing all over her. Throwing <laughs> sweet kisses at her. Yeah. Talking about what can I do for you, baby? <laughs> now you know you're heading for some hot bricks. <laughs> you know you're heading for some slicing. Yeah. You know it's going to be a problem. I'm not trying to be crass. I'm trying to get us to understand oh, how God when we wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to act any way I want to act. He's a jealous God. Amen. He doesn't put up with that type of behavior. So James is saying to us in substance, watch how you talk. Watch what you say. Watch how you behave. Watch how you treat other people. Stop being so self-focused because the God who had Jesus die for you is a jealous God. He won't have you doing anything you want to do. That's right. That's right. Because it costs too much to redeem you. Yes, sir. It costs the blood of his son to redeem yes, us. Right. It costs the suffering on the cross of his son to redeem us. Yes, it costs God the best he had Amen. to redeem us. Yes, and therefore, he's a jealous God. Right. And we decide we want to act any old way we want to act. All right. All right. But thankfully, even though you and I have been guilty of doing that, probably just yesterday, if not this morning, right. thankfully, he grants grace. I love how it's written in this text of scripture. It's so clear. It's so beautiful. It's so wonderful. As the Bible says, but he gives more grace. He gives more grace. How in the world can we deny the fact that God gives more grace? God is saying, I know you're struggling with your flesh. I know you're struggling with your own self-centered ideas and agenda. I'm calling you to live in a different way, and I'm jealous over you because I want you to live in a different way, and I know how hard it is, so I'm going to give you more grace. Right. I'm going to give you more grace. Now understand this, church. Grace is not a ticket to keep on acting the way you want to act. Grace is not a ticket for you and me to say, well, God will forgive, so let me just cut the food. That's not what grace is. Right. Grace is something that God gives 
with the intention of our responding to it in obedience. Grace is the privilege of humbling ourselves in repentance and confession. That's what grace is. Grace is saying, thank you, Lord, for one more chance. Yes, sir. Yes. And not forfeit, forfeiting that by ignoring the changes. God is so merciful, so gracious, all loving and willingly supplies all that we need to meet his all-encompassing demands. Right. Have you ever thought that about God? Not only does he call us to holiness, not only does he call us, call us to Christ's likeness, but he even gives us the ability to be that way. All right, all right. That's why he gave us his Holy Spirit. If the church is ever to be the church, we need to live in grace and give in grace. Mm -hmm. Which simply means when you say something that bugs me, right. or I say something that bugs you, or we do something that hurts one another, we need to learn to give grace as much as we want to receive right. grace. Right. And so the Lord tells us through James that why we can't be friends if we want to stay on our own agenda and we want to disobey the Lord, be adulterous to the Lord, mm -hmm. then we need to recognize that and be grateful that he gives more grace All right, Mike. so that when we recognize we're wrong, mm -hmm. he's willing to call us back home. Yes, sir. He's willing to forgive us right. and cleanse us. I wish we could learn how to do that one another. Amen. I really wish we could. You all remember the story of the prodigal son? Yes, remember that the boy said, Daddy, give me what I got coming. Yeah. You remember that? Right. You remember he went out and jumped and everything he could. Yeah. He did a he did it all his life. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he all Kelly, all these terrible yeah. Then he came home broke. Yeah. Busted and disgusted. And as he was coming home, the daddy saw him coming. Right. And ran out to him. Yeah. Grabbed him. Come on. Hugged his neck. Yeah. Kissed him. Put a ring on his finger. Yeah. Told the folk, somebody fix some barbecue. Yeah. This boy has come back home. Y'all yeah. remember that? Yeah. And that shows you how God feels about you and me yeah. when we're willing to recognize our wrong and turn our way. Yeah. But too many of us act like the other brother. Yeah. Remember the other brother? Yeah. Yeah. He saw that. He saw that. Other, and, and he went to his neck. There was a big party going on. He stayed in his room. Watching Netflix. <laughs> and the dad came and said, How come you're not at the party? Yeah, come on, boy. And that boy said, All this time, come on, boy. Well, I served you. Yeah. I did what you told me to do. Uh -huh. I didn't give you any trouble at all. Uh -huh. You never gave me. Yeah. Do you see that selfish uh, yeah. Do you see that self? That's what James. Why do you have? Why couldn't he be friends with his brother? He was focused on himself. Right. You never gave me a party. I never got a ring. You never even sent me an Amazon gift. Come on, I got nothing from you. And this low down, sneaking, skunking son of yours. Yeah. Not my brother. Come on, right. Son of yours came back from party. Yeah. And you're going to give him all that. All right, all right. A whole lot of us act like that now. Yeah. Because we are too focused on ourselves. Right. And that's why we can't be friends yeah. with one another. Thank God he is full of grace. Yeah. Well, how can we be friends as we turn to the latter part of this message? How can you and I right, be friends? This is all coming from these first ten verses. Well, how can we become friends of God and friends of one another? First of all, we got to understand that though God gives grace, grace is free, but it demands a proper response. In other words, you and I do nothing to earn this grace, but receiving it requires a change in behavior. That change is listed in a series of injunctions that James gives toward the end of the section of Scripture we're studying. How can we be friends? Well, let me submit to you first that we can become friends when we learn to submit to God. That's right. That's what James says in this text. Yes, submit to God. When we talk about submitting to God, it, the, the, the grammar tells us we have to give ourselves to God.
God in a submissive way. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me drop this on you while I'm here. Those of you brothers, you marry, mm -hmm. and you've been reading Ephesians 5 somewhere down your life. All right. You heard sermons on it. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, wives, submit yourselves mm -hmm. to your own husbands. Some of us miss the yourselves part. Mm -hmm. We just read, wives, submit. Now, now, some of us kid with that. I'm not talking about the kidding part. I'm talking about some of us got real problem like that. All right. You better submit to me. Uh, good try. All right. Come on, man. You, you, you gonna get yourself hurt? You gonna get? I'm concerned about some of us. You better submit to me and be serious about it. Right? I'm not talking about kidding. I'm talking people are like, serious about it. All right. I tell you both. Both submit. You can't make her. Submit. Okay. She has to make herself. Right, bro. Submit. All right, all right. Boy, I'm going to get quiet here. Oh, all right. right. She has to make herself submit. Okay. And she's not submitting because you so big and bad. That's right. Come on, man. But she's looking above. Yeah, man. I'm listening to you. Stuff, and I don't want to do this because you told me. Yes, right. Even if she marries you a neighbor. All right. <laughs> Go home and look it up. <laughs> Y'all remember Nabal? He was a fool. Go home and read. He is the one God is to call the command. And she does what he says. Uh -huh. Because that's honoring him. Well, I use that example to get to this. Uh, James says, submit to God. You know what that means? God is not going to make us submit. Right. Have you ever thought about that? Right. God's not going to make you act right. No. He's not going to make me act right. No, right. Someone's going around their eyes, but one of these days, God's going to make me everything I'm supposed to be. Oh. Not without your, not without mine. Submit. Submitting? Right. God doesn't work like that. You know God doesn't work like right. that. Because if it had worked that way, some of us would have not solved over our head right now. <laughs> After all these years we've been doing what we do, yeah. We've been knocked out the corner somewhere. Yeah, right, right. Legs shaking. Yes, sir. If God was going to force it. But God calls for us to submit yourselves. Stiff neck is the opposite yeah. of being submissive. Right. Sometimes our own pride gets in the way yeah. of submitting to God. Right. Some of you watched that movie from Spike Lee, Malcolm X, came out several years ago. There was a scene in that movie where Malcolm is in jail. And he's learning this teaching that this guy has given him. And the guy gets to the point where he says, all right, now we have to kneel and pray. And Malcolm, at that point in the movie, says, nah, I'm not kneeling for anybody. Many people feel that way about God. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about people in the church. Oh, my God. Oh, man. I'm not kneeling before anybody. Better watch what you say. There's a day coming where everybody will bow to Jesus. He's given a chance right now. Go ahead and do it. I call for you to do it. And if you got any sense, you'll bow down now. Later on, you won't get the option. And so submit to God. How can we be friends? Each and every one of us has got to learn to yield ourselves to God's call for how we live our lives. Man, man. Secondly, how can we be friends? He says, resist the devil. All right, brother. Resist the devil. And scripture says he will flee from us. Resist the devil. This means to set ourselves in opposition to the whisperings that Satan puts in our ears. Oh, man. You're right. You know, good and well, when you were relating with other people, and, and this, this teaching is about how we get on with other people. Yeah. You know, good and well, when, when, when you are in a situation with somebody and there's some friction, you know you hear the devil's voice. Come on, man. You know you hear it. Yeah. Come on, come on. I wouldn't take that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I would tell, I, I, I tell you what, right. in my words, yes, I cut you too short to sit down. <laughs> you don't know how much, man. Hey, you know how we do. And someone's having there in the cold and going, ooh, Jesus, Jesus, stop me. Get something. You need to cut that foolishness out. And yield to the Lord. Resist the devil. When he talks in your ear, and you know what he's talking to. Push him to the side. 
to you. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Sadly, too many Christians get it twisted. We resist God and we submit to the devil. God is saying, behave in this way. This is how you deal with this situation. And we say, well, we're going to resist that. Because our flesh says, now I'm going to feel so much better if I do it my way. And so we're going to be friends, submit to God. Secondly, resist the devil. Thirdly, if we're going to be friends, we have to draw near to God. That's what's written in this text. We can never hope for God's favor while we prefer to remain at a distance from Him. We have to draw near to God. What does this mean? It means cultivating His heart in ourselves. It has the idea of learning to love what God loves. And that will change the way we think. And we'll be drawing near to him, and he will draw near to us. This is how we become friends. And then, as we read this text a little bit further, if we are to become friends, we have to cleanse our hands and purify our hearts. This is the thought like you see in the Old Testament. You remember when people came to God in the Old Testament? Particularly when they came to come and present themselves before the Lord. Yeah. You remember those instances where he says, wash your clothes. Yeah. Remember Moses coming to the mountain yeah. and seeing the burning bush. Yeah. And you remember how he drew near and God said, wait a minute. Yeah. Take off those shoes. Because yes, you are on holy ground. Holy ground. Yes, right. Don't you come in here like you walking the way you walk before anybody else. No, God deserves more respect than the president of the United States. He deserves more respect than any leader in this world. He, was, he, he, he needs our ultimate respect. Right. And so this text, when it says, cleanse your hands and purify your heart, the idea of it is, come to me correctly. All right. mm -hmm. Don't come to me like I'm just any old body. All right. All right. Some of us are rearing children. Yeah. And you know, you want your children, if you have good sense yourself. Mm -hmm. You want your children to come to you, correct? That's right. right. I've said this before, I'll say it again. I got three adult children. Mm -hmm. Love them to death. All right. While they were being reared, had to make sure. Come to me correct. Mike, I need some money. I want this new pet to me. Good job. You know, <laughs> get down. You know, I don't. They never did come in their mother. Oh, this is nasty food. Throw a plate down. Give me some of <laughs> Now, you know good law. I'm going to be preaching here today. <laughs> I've been getting three squares a day from some of <laughs> Because that would not have happened in the Brown household. Oh, by the way, let me, since I dropped that out there, uh, those of you who rear children, make sure they come in. Correct? Yeah. I get that to you for free as well. All right, all right. And so then the idea here, cleanse your hands, purify your heart. And notice, if you're reading along with me in the text, he says, do this, you sinners and double-minded. All right. What a way to talk. Mm -hmm. What are you saying, James? I'm using these terms because I want these folks to know that I'm writing to, and you West, you people as well. Yeah. That your behavior has to change, or the way in which you're referred to won't change. So the idea here is to get our lives together. Let me say something very quickly about the double minded. The double minded term uh, is, is the idea of a divided soul. The idea of schizophrenia. You know what schizophrenia is? All right, all right. It's a divided soul. What James is getting at is the idea that you all, people I'm writing to, and you and me, by extension, get to the point where you decide that you want to follow Jesus and you will follow Jesus yeah. instead of jumping back and forth all right, all right. across the fence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how some Christians do. Yes. They're with the Lord one day, yeah. off on the next day. On, back with him Wednesday, off on Thursday. Back with them on Friday, at least until 5 o'clock. <laughs> Off from 5 until midnight. Right. Pick them up Saturday, and then drop them off about 5 or 6 o'clock. Right. And then pick them back up on Sunday morning. Mm. 
That's being double-minded. All right, all right. Some Christians have yet to make up their mind about truly following the Lord. Right. And we need to be people that make up our mind right. about truly following the Lord. I'm not saying that we don't have struggles. All of us have struggles. Yes, sir. But I'm talking about a determined mind that says, in spite of my struggles, I'm sticking with Jesus. Yes, Amen. So closing, you and I must decide to follow God over self Amen. if we are to be friends. Amen. Being sold on self will cause us to forfeit God's favor. Amen. Being sold on self will cause us to forfeit God's eternal home. Yes, Being sold on self will never allow us to be friends with God. Amen. Being sold on self will never allow us to be friends with one another. Why can't we be friends? Because sometimes we just don't want to be. We just don't want to be. Right. No, I'm happy the way I am. It's me, myself, and nobody else. Uh-huh. It'll be you, yourself, and a whole lot of other folk in hell. Yeah. With that kind of an attitude. We got to decide we want to follow. There's a song, Brother Greg, you don't need to sing it right now. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Leave it on me. Hold on, God. Unchanging. God is committed to us. How much are we committed to God? God is committed to us. How much are we willing to give ourselves to God? Sometimes you and I will commit ourselves to everything and everybody else but God. We need to be committed to Him so that we can be a friend of God and we can be a friend of one another. Is this a get on your case message? Absolutely not. Come on, I don't try to get on folks' case. Because this message got to come to me before it comes to you. Yeah, this is a message of what God is telling me something, and now I, you need to listen to. Yes, sir. And so that we can see his face in his face. Yeah, right. So church, why can't we be friends? Uh, there's no reason why we can't be. That's right. That is legit. <clears throat> we want to be people of God. Let's let Westview be a place like that old TV show. You want to go where? Everybody. Everybody? Knows your name, and they are always magic. That's what we want it. A place where folk love one another genuinely because they either learn how to like one another, even when they don't feel like it. Brother get up and say, Brown, I like you sometimes. You get on me too much. <laughs> he didn't say that. I'm just putting that in there. <laughs> but the point is, we got to learn to love one another. Despite yeah. of our idiosyncrasies right. and our differences. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Maybe you are here today and this message has called you to need prayer for some particular reason, or you needed prayer before you came in the building. We want to give you an opportunity to ask for prayer to bless your life, not us blessing your life, but God blessing your life. And if that's the need you have, we want you to give, we'll give you a chance to let that be known. And maybe there's somebody here who's yet to touch the water to have their sins forgiven. Yeah. That water is important, though. Yeah. Yeah. That water is the water, the means that God uses to wash away every stain in your life. Yeah. That water is there as a door into the kingdom of God. Yes, a door into the church of Christ. Yes, a door for the Holy Spirit to yes, yes, and dwell with you. If you need that today, we want to give you the chance to come forward. Give me your hand and give God your heart. We'll take you in the back, dunk you in the water, bring you back out. Promise me one job. <laughs> Live your life for the Lord with the encouragement we get from one another. Are you here and you have a need? If you have a need, please let it be known. And I'm so good and you keep on blessing me. Everything that I have, everything.